We are holding our eighth annual conference in Mombasa. And as a pensions industry, you know, we, we, sorry, we're holding our eighth annual pensions conference. We have more than 250 delegates comprising of trustees from more than 100 retirement funds, including some of the largest schemes in the country, as well as fund managers, custodians, and our regulator has also been well represented at this conference. Some of the key things we are talking about today is that how can we improve the pension system in the country? And especially COVID-19 has been a big shock to almost every sector in our economy. And the pension sector has also not been spared. We have seen very many employers have reduced or suspended contributions. We have seen massive payouts from the pensions industry, especially from the hospitality industry because of people exiting employment and uh, accessing their pension benefits. We've also seen a huge impact on investments last year because the Nairobi Securities Exchange was down by almost 25%. We also had an impact on offshore securities and property was also down last year. So we're, as we build back better, we need to see how do we create a more resilient pension system. And also in the last few months, we have seen that the pensions industry has actually been very resilient. Trustees of pension funds, members of pension funds, you know, service providers, we have been able to keep the show on the road. Meetings are being held, annual general meetings for pension schemes are being held, and they're actually going pretty well. Okay. and the industry has started recovering. But as we build back, we need to see how do we do this in a more sustainable manner. Okay. So some of the things that we need to focus on are how do we make our pension system in Kenya more inclusive? And we must recognize that we are in a country where 85% of our workforce is actually in the informal sector. 80% of jobs are being created in the informal sector. This is not a sector that should be excluded from saving for their old age. Okay? So this is a very important area that we will be discussing over the next two days. We are also looking at how do we improve, even for those who are lucky enough to be in a pension arrangement, how do we improve the benefits that they receive from their pension schemes? So for example, as Zamara, we did a study of more than 65,000 Kenyans who are actually in formal sector salaried employment. And what we found is that the average pension that people were receiving or expected to receive when they retire is only about 34% of their last salary. This is way too low. We need to move it to about 65 to 75% if future pensioners are going to have a comfortable life in their future. So this is a very urgent area. So we are looking at what are the interventions that need to be made. For example, do we need to see higher levels of contributions? Do we need to ensure that pension contributions are compulsory, mandatory? Okay. So we're talking about things like the implementation of the National Social Security Fund Act of 2013 so that we can bring more Kenyans, get them to save, and save at a reasonable level. Okay. The third thing that we will be looking at is how do we make our pension system more responsive? Because you know, when you talk to Kenyans about saving for their retirement, one of the key messages that they give to us is that yes, saving for their old age is important, but it's probably not the most important priority for them. Saving for housing, for example, is very critical. Educating their children. And what we've seen in COVID-19, the importance of having an emergency fund is also very important. So we are looking to see how can we make our pension system more responsive. And as Zamara, we have various initiatives such as a post-retirement medical scheme. We're looking to see how we can enable our members to start enjoying utilizing some of their pension benefits for housing purposes, having mortgage loans. We are talking to mortgage providers about offering a uh, more reasonable rate to members of Zamara pension funds. Um, and we're looking to enable our members to save for emergencies. The other thing that we are going to spend a lot of time on is how can our 1.4 trillion industry contribute to the development of our country, right? So we have this 1.4 trillion shillings, but it is being invested in government securities largely and a small number of stocks on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. How can we have pension schemes creating more impact in our country, okay? So here we have, you know, we'll be hearing from the Kenya Pension Fund Investment Consortium, of which I am the chairman. This is a group of pension funds who have come together to collaborate on making investments, especially into things like infrastructure. 
You know, as a country, we have a huge infrastructure gap. In other parts of the world, pension schemes make a, play a very key role in helping to build the ports, the railways, the roads, um, the power stations. Why can we not be doing the same in Kenya? So pension funds have come together to take the initiative of engaging with the government. People who are in the informal sector, who are probably not earning a salary, who have seasonal earnings, very irregular earnings, how do we get them to save? The way to do that is to make it very simple, very flexible, and using technology. Okay? So at Zamara, we have a, launched a scheme for the informal sector called the Fahari Retirement Plan. Through this arrangement, any Kenyan, each of the 17 million Kenyans in the informal sector, they can open a secure pension and insurance account that is linked to their national ID in less than two minutes. They can make contributions of any amount at any time, any frequency from wherever they are using any channel very easily. On their state, they, they can on their phone, whether it's a smartphone or a feature phone, they can see their statement every day. They can see the interest being credited every day. Okay? And they can access this money should they really need to access it, even though we would want to encourage them to keep it for the long term. Right? So, there, with technology, you can, you, can, you, can, you can make it easy to facilitate collecting small amounts and aggregating this and, and saving this for people. And I would strongly encourage every Kenyan. COVID-19 has actually shown us right, that if most of the people who are affected were those in the informal sector, why? Because they had near zero savings. Let me give you an example. Let's take a mama boga. Right? If a mama boga had been saving 20 shillings per day, right, and had done so for 10 years, she would have accumulated 120,000 shillings by now. Okay? During COVID-19, she could have accessed perhaps 10,000 shillings every month and taken care of our family. Right? When she retires, if she carries on just 20 shillings per day, she could get a pension of between 8 to 10,000 shillings per month for the rest of her life. Now let's take a border border rider. If the border border rider does the same, had he accumulated 50, had he been contributing 50 shillings a day for the last 10 years, by now he would have accumulated 300,000 shillings. Again, would have been very helpful during this time. And if he continues to do so, by the time he retires, he will have a pension of 20,000 shillings per month. Now, we all need to realize there will come a time when we will no longer be able to work because of old age and ill health, right? So we really need to bring these interventions for Kenyans, right? So that we can, we can make a difference. Because can you imagine, if it was so hard to take care of our people during these few months of COVID, can we imagine how much harder it will be when these people permanently drop off the workforce because they can no longer work because of old age? We will face an exponentially much larger crisis. And the figures, that, you know, the projection suggests that in 20 years time, we will need more than 300 million shillings just to provide a stipend to the, to, the, to the 9 million Kenyans who will be above the age of 60 by that date, by, the, by that time. Right? So this is something that we need to work on. And I'm really happy you know, that the government is looking at a national pensions policy, which it is hoped will be finalized before the end of this year. As Zamara, we are looking to making significant contributions uh, to, to this policy so that the views of stakeholders can be incorporated in this document.